It's part two of building a DIY vacuum table. After last week's failure, I bet you can't wait to see what I do to fix it. Neither can I. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. I want to say a big thank you to all those who left comments on my last video about possible ways that I could fix the issues I'm having with the vacuum table. They range from painting the uh, MDF uh, with various products to seal it, to covering it with various products, changing my vacuum cleaners uh, to prevent it from burning out, and we will cover that uh, a little bit later, and even conversion of uh, air compressor into a vacuum pump. All great ideas and uh, I'll show you what I've come up with and how I'm going to try and get this sorted. I had some spare paint laying about so I painted the baseboard both back and front as well as the edges of the platen here. I didn't worry about the underside, I'm not worried about it pulling air through the MDF surface here. It all adds to the vacuum that I get and uh, I'm certainly not worried about painting this side of it because uh, I'm going to be skimming this flat at some stage. Now I did do the back, but in addition to painting the back, I also coated it in a uh, plastic cover uh, material. So uh, here it is here, it just comes in a roll, just a, a sticky uh, vinyl coating, and that's going to provide the extra sealing I want for the back of the table to make sure no air is pulled through there because that seemed to be where I was losing uh, most of my vacuum. So what we need to do now is give it a test and see what it's going like. I've got a bit of uh, 9mm MDF here, I'm just going to put it on the table, let it vacuum down, we'll see how easily I can slide the cross. You notice I haven't covered all the holes here. It's pretty determined. As for lifting it goes, yeah, I can lift it. Now it's the sideways forces involved in moving my piece of material across the uh, vacuum table that concern me more than the forces involved in lifting it up. I don't think in general machining is going to lift the item up off the table to break it free, but I think if it can start sliding, uh, that could be an issue. As you can see there, I couldn't slide it, and I doubt very much any cutter I put on my machine could slide it. Now the other thing is you notice I didn't have all the holes covered, and that's the secret of having those uh, the small pinholes feeding the vacuum rather than large, say, quarter-inch holes. With the number of open ports I had there, if they all had a quarter-inch hole in them, there'd be no vacuum left. My piece would have broken free really easily. With uh, very, very small holes, they have little effect on the loss of vacuum and the piece stays sitting on the tabletop. Now the next issue is when I uh, checked to see how flat my uh, tabletop was, I find that there's a bit of addition in it. So the next job will be to machine it flat. I've set my X and my zero off to this corner here and now I'm just going to zero the cutter using the touch off plate here. Now that I've done that, I'm going to skim 0.1 of a millimetre or four thousandths of an inch off the top surface of the table, vacuum table here. I'm going to be using the dust collection. I'm not going to have the dust uh, port going here. Uh, I don't want to suck rubbish down into these holes here. don't want to block off those uh, the small holes I've got in here. Well, that's come out really nice. I cannot see 
where the cut has actually been. There are no witness marks on this at all, which really surprises me. But that's just idea. It'll be nice and flat. Now, there's no point me putting this piece of MDF on there and trying to move it to see if it's stuck down. Couldn't move it before when it wasn't flat. Uh, there's no reason I should be able to move it now that it is. So what I'm going to do is use something smaller. There will be less vacuum on this here, so it'll be easier to move. I tried it before and it was relatively easy to move with a finger. So we'll see what the effect is now. Okay, so as before, that's not moving. But this here, still relatively easy to move. We're not giving up yet though. Now when Michael visited me and told me about his vacuum table, he told me about one other thing. It was a material that went between the surface of the vacuum table top here and the piece you're machining. And what it did is it filled in any little gaps that was allowing air to seep out around here and it improved the vacuuming. Now I can't remember what that material was and even if I could, I probably wouldn't be able to get it locally anyway. So I had to hunt around to see if there was something I could use that was in plentiful supply that anybody could get. And this is what I've come up with. A local newspaper. Not really worth reading, but uh, it's pretty amazing what it does when you sit on the vacuum table top here. So if you remember, I was able to easily move this here with a, a finger before. Well, not anymore. It now takes four fingers digging right into it and quite a bit of force to actually pull it across the table. There's no way I could do that with one finger. So the newspaper is doing two important jobs here. First, it's sealing off any of the unused ports here and reducing the loss of vacuum. And uh, secondly, it's just getting in between the tabletop and sealing much more effectively the material to the tabletop surface. It's really incredible how a simple piece of newspaper can make such a difference to this vacuum table. And now, the elephant in the room. I've got it by the trunk here. Easy Dumbo. It's the vacuum cleaner itself. It's not designed to be used with a vacuum table. How vacuum cleaner works is it sucks the air in through the hose as you're vacuuming your floor, runs that through the bag to collect all the dust out of it, through some more filters, and then it channels that air through the motor and out into the workshop. Now it's done that so that air cools the motor as it goes past, and of course we are blocking the hose with our table, depriving it of the air that it desperately needs to keep the motor cool. The result is the motor will overheat and will eventually burn out. So you've got several options open to you. You can allow a little bit of air to enter the system so that some cooling does occur through the motor. And by just running your hand over the top of the outlet, you can feel how hot that air is. And hopefully you won't burn out your motor. Alternatively, you could use a proper vacuum pump. I've seen quite a few of them on the likes of eBay, but I'm not entirely sure any of them would be suitable for the table that I've made here. I don't think they'd have the uh, pulling power that I require. I honestly don't know, and I don't really want to go buying a heap of pumps just to try and find out. Lastly, you can use a vacuum cleaner like I'm using here. And this one is a Festool vacuum cleaner, and it's a high quality uh, industrial vacuum cleaner and it has one trick up its sleeve. It has a separate cooling path to keep the motor cool from the path it uses to vacuum up the dust and rubbish. That means if you block off the vacuum hose the motor won't overheat. You can just let it run. So that is a great uh, vacuum to be used with a vacuum table like this. Of course the disadvantage of it is they're very, very expensive. If there's something you need to check out, make sure your vacuum cleaner has alternative cooling to uh, keep it cool when using it on a vacuum table. Otherwise, you are likely to burn out that vacuum cleaner. Of course, if it's cheap enough, it may not worry you. If you use it for a short amount of times, it might be okay as well. I'm, I'm not sure. 
Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. For those of you who already have a vacuum table, I'd be curious to know if you give the newspaper test a try and see if it improves the holding power of your vacuum table. Just leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm sure others would be interested to know your take on it as well. All that remains me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my website at www.cncnuts.com. Follow the link below this here and you'll be taken off to the write-up on this particular episode. Okay, well, until next time, cheers. Come on, Dumbo, we're out of here. <laughs>